So today is the first day that we have had sunshine in weeks, if not months. And it's also the time, it's one of my favorite times of year when we get to start starting seeds indoors and really doing the major planning and deciding of where I'm gonna be putting my new flowers and doing additions to the yard. After being cooped up with winter and just not having good weather or having a lot of weather and you're outside having to deal with it as you guys have seen in past videos, knowing that the promise of spring is really truly around the corner does such good things for the soul. So today I'm coming out and kind of doing an inspection of the herbs and the flower beds because I'm going to be adding in a ton of new herb plants this year and I will totally be sharing with you the new varieties that we're doing. And I'm actually bringing in a lot of perennial herbs. I've got some annual herbs that I already do and some existing perennial herbs, but I am expanding, probably doubling the amount of herbal plants that we have on the homestead this spring. A winter garden is full of hope because even though the lavender plant looks dead, I know that in just a few short months, it will have blossoms and begin blooming again. These brown branches and twigs will soon be gone and new growth will begin to peek through. But late winter and early spring are the perfect time for the gardener to go out and begin to plan where they will be bringing in new plants and new life. All of the little hidden and empty spots where we can tuck in new beloved plants. This back part of the garden that has southern exposure and lots of new foxgloves already coming up is the perfect spot for me to tuck in some of my new medicinal perennials that you're going to see the list of and that we're beginning to seed start. My goal is to have flowers either for beauty and herbal purposes, which oftentimes you get, that's what they are, or just for beauty purposes, but to have all over the homestead, just gorgeous pockets everywhere you look, things of beauty. And one of the areas that definitely needs some tender loving care is the flower bed that, fl that flanks our driveway as you pull up into the house. So that is the entrance that we use right there that still has the Christmas wreath on it. That's the entrance to the house. And you can see that I've got still dried and I'll have to be doing some pruning. Not quite yet, but in a little bit here on my hydrangea. And you guys, look at that. There's actual leaves that are starting to come out. So there's already new growth. So that actually means I'll be able to prune this fairly soon. But... I had tried to do some landscaping with weed blocker fabric, which you can still see the remnants of there. And then we thought we were gonna cover it up with rock because that's not going to break down. And I was thinking I wouldn't have to replace it all the time. Well, that's true, but the rock doesn't break down so it doesn't feed the soil underneath. And it's been sadly neglected, as you can see. And there's quite a bit of weeds, unfortunately grass, which doesn't have any benefit uh, to this area. There's quite a bit of weeds coming up. Now there are other plants that I've got in here um, that are starting to grow and that are starting to come up here. Um, I've got some different lilies and I've got some lupin and stuff that will grow, but this is an area, and I have one of my rose bushes here, which needs to be pruned as well but this is an area that desperately needs some help. We've got further down some cedar and some other bushes and stuff. And so that pretty much keeps the weeds out of that area and it does well, but I've got like this little, little area here that needs some attention. So this is another spot that's going to look hopefully vastly different come summer. Even though I'm not doing any planting except inside the house with my seed starting, which has just started. I started the onions this past week, and then this week I'll be doing some of my cold weather starts that I'll be beginning them indoors and be able to plant them out in just four weeks time. And definitely seed starting, even if it's those perennial flowers from seed and some of them annual, some of those have a long start time before you can plant them outside. So I'm gonna be doing that. But what I love about this time of year is it's a time of prep and things you just slowly are beginning to ease into the full-on planting and then harvest come summertime. 
So one of the other things that we've been prepping is the vegetable garden. We started last spring doing the wood chips on half of it to decide if I liked that method um, better than doing traditional tilling. So far, I'm really happy with it. Definitely less weeds, but we're adding our next layer on top of that. So I'm going to show you the state of the garden right now. So we cleaned up one of the areas where we feed the cows. So that is some haylage and of course manure. And we're going to be spreading that. Right now it's a little bit frozen because it's frosty this morning, but I'm gonna be spreading that over top of the wood chip area. And we're just gonna keep continually adding layers to this. So I'm really excited. We're definitely keeping this half of the garden and doing that layered mulched method. And about the only thing that I still have growing right now in the garden is two little cabbages that I haven't harvested yet, but they're still good. And then some bok choy, though it's getting, I've got some newer shoots the down lower, but I'll be ripping pretty much everything out and we'll be putting down, I've got leaves in my mulch rows down there, but this area does have some cover crop. I've got chickweed growing um, right now, but this area is going to get mulched and manure down so that it has time to compost before we do our warm weather planting the end of May. One of my favorite things that soothes the soul, especially this time of year where I feel like I've been cooped up and haven't got to get my hands in the dirt or really do much gardening, is to just come and walk and just observe everything. So the blueberry bushes I already have planted, and I've got a detailed video on planting blueberries. I'll put it in the video description below if you've got blueberry plants and you want to know how to prune them, as well as raspberries. But I just love to come out and walk and see everything. It's been freshly mulched and composted. Sometimes a garden is just soothing to the soul just by looking at it through the eye and doing nothing else. Just like the plants and the earth slowly begin to waken back up from the winter months as the days get longer and we get peaks of sunshine and the temperatures slowly begin to warm up. The planning of the new garden and the new harvest to come also help the gardener to slowly ease back in. So let's go back inside and check out those herbal varieties of new plants that we're putting in. So one of the things I do is I just bring out all of my seeds that I know I'm gonna either be direct sowing those flower seeds still in late winter or early spring, the ones I'm gonna be seed starting, as well as the vegetables that I know I'm gonna be seed starting inside the house as well. So I've got my tomatoes, my peppers, my lettuce, holy basil, broccoli, cauliflower, and I just started the onions a few days ago. And then over here I have got some lupin seed and yarrow, and then a perennial wildflower mix. I just love, it's kind of like an Easter egg hunt, but you don't know what you're going to get. And I just love it. It's like getting those mystery bags. Did you ever go to the store and they have, they'll have like mystery bag sales? I think like in smaller, a lot of times in older stores too that you buy a bag, you don't know what's in it, and it says it's valued at, you know, like maybe valued at $50 and you get it for $20, but it's a surprise is what's in it. I kind of feel like that when I'm throwing out the wildflower perennial mixes, even though you know there's a list on the back of the varieties that's in the mix, you're not ever sure which ones are actually going to come up for sure in bloom. So it's always fun. I love scattering a packet or two of these out in some of the flower beds, and then it's just a surprise with what ends up growing and blooming. I've also got, I'm really excited to try these. They are a lime green zinnia. I love growing some different colors or sometimes a little bit unexpected. And a lime green zinnia sounds really fun and a little bit unexpected. And then the yarrow, not only is it gorgeous, this is the Colorado mix from Baker Creek Seeds where it's got um, blood reds, cream, yellow, and white. So a lot of times yarrow we typically think of as just being the cream or the white color, but this one has some different colored blossoms in there. So I'm really excited to grow this, not just for the beauty, but also definitely for the medicinal purposes. So this one is high on my list and I'm going to seed start some of them. And then I'm also going to scatter some of the seeds too. So that way I'm kind of guaranteed with the ones that I seed start, but hopefully more will come up with just direct sowing some of the seeds outside. Now you guys, all of my, this is my new herbal medicines and I'm in no way sponsored by this company, but hey, 
I bought a lot of seeds from them this year. So if they wanted to send me some free seed credit, that would be awesome. But it's called, and I'm probably mispronouncing it. I don't even know how you say it. They're from Oregon, but it's Siskiyou Seeds. What was awesome is they are all heirloom, but they have a medicinal herbal seed section with selections that I have not found in very many other places. And it was pretty robust, I meaning they had quite a bit. I had to temper myself. I wanted to just order like a packet of everything, but I knew there was no way I was going to be able to put in that many new plants this year. So I held myself back and went after the ones that I know I'll be featuring in the monthly herbal deep dive growing and medicinal use inside the Pioneering Today Academy. So I have got, in addition to yarrow and marshmallow root, which the marshmallow root, I shouldn't say marshmallow root, marshmallow plant, the root is what you typically harvest a lot when you're using marshmallow medicinally, but that seed needs to be cold stratified. So if you've ever heard the term that the seeds need to have stratification, it means they need to be kept at a cold temperature for a certain amount of weeks to mimic nature when they would be outside. The seed knows to be dormant. It goes through that process of being cold like in the winters. And then when it warms up, it's going to sprout and actually germinate. So there's some flower seeds. You don't want into this really with vegetable seeds. There are some flower seeds that if you don't do that cold stratification, then they won't sprout and they won't grow for you. And marshmallow is one of those. So I already have my seeds in the fridge, just waiting to be able to start them. But I promised you that I would share the other varieties that I'm growing this year. So I am doing White Wonder, Feverfew, Whorehound, Hyssop, so excited about that one. Ashwagandha, yes, you can grow that one at home. Valerian and Wood Betany. If you listen to Growing a Cottage Garden podcast episode that I did with Carolyn from Homesteading Family, you will know how highly she talks about Wood Betany. And this is a hard one. You don't a lot of times see this in stores to actually just buy starts. So I'm super excited that I found the seeds and I'm going to be growing this one. And below I'll link to that podcast episode and the blog post. You can also read the episode if you don't want to listen to it, but highly recommend listening to podcasts, I guess, but I'm also a podcast junkie. I listen to podcasts when I'm planting, when I'm cleaning the house, definitely doing dishes and all those kinds of chores. So I highly recommend checking out that episode. Getting all your seed packets out is akin to a fashionista getting the latest runway collection. There's something special and exciting when the air is almost pregnant with the flavor and colors of all the crops you will soon be harvesting. And if you happen to recognize that passage, it is directly from the book I'm reading, and I also happen to write The Family Garden Plan. With the medicinal herbs that I'm starting from seed this year and adding to the garden, two of those are marshmallow and wood betony. And these seeds need to go through the process of cold stratification. What it means is we're basically going to be mimicking the weather where they are in a wet and cold period, usually about three weeks, 21 days, because the marshmallow and the wood betony I'm actually growing from seed and I'm gonna be seed starting them indoors. I need to get these seeds in their stratification process right away. Even though I don't love paper towels and plastic bags, it's pretty amazing how easy they can make a process of mimicking months out in snow and rain and cold temperatures inside the house in your fridge. You just wanna make sure that you have your paper towel damp. You don't want it to be soaking wet, but you definitely need it to have enough moisture to soften and rehydrate the seeds. Seed companies do a really good job of making sure those seeds are dry enough to store for periods on end. But when it comes to stratification, we definitely need to make sure that they are moist. Then it is just sprinkling our seeds right in on the damp paper towel. And I always do extra. I figure it's better to have too many than not enough. Then we just need to seal them up and put them in the fridge, remembering to label them. When you plan on doing lots of seed starting, you definitely want to know which seeds are what. 
I hope you will be adding in some of your own medicinal and flowering herbs this year. Thank you.